Thanks for listening to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in American soccer. And don't forget to subscribe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast. My name is Steven Jodderand. Joining me today is Armand Kafai, no Jake Watroba. And on today's episode, it is all about the U.S. men's national team and Greg Berhalter's decisions. Listeners, you know the drill. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button, leave us a five star review, and follow us at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. Send in your comments, your feedback, your thoughts. Alrighty, Armand. No Jake. Just you and I, back to the good old days. How we doing? You had a little sports adventure. You went out to OU Sunday night, enjoyed some Sunday night football. But I must admit, I think you really missed out on some good old Sunday night football in Seattle. You're telling me. Y'all texting me this stuff. I'm begging to get more information because the connection is trash. I'm yelling, yo, where, where, why can't I watch this Galaxy Seattle game? <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm watching, you know, boring old American football, man. Come on. Like, yeah, I did miss out, to be honest with you. And you know what? Uh, quick random rant. I do not like the this, – there's this weird allure around college football. I still do not understand how someone can look at me in the face and say college football as a whole with the commercials, with everything, is more irritating than watching 90 minutes of pure football. Can we, I don't know. Can we pause on this moment? Ramon, because I've heard it on the radio now multiple times that American football has a pace to play problem, just like baseball. And I completely agree. You know what's brilliant about soccer, at least non-tournament games, that it is a 90-minute game with a 15-minute halftime. Yep. You know approximately what time the game will end. And that's fantastic. You don't have to waste time guessing. You don't have to say... Hey, honey, there's four minutes left in the fourth quarter. That could take half an hour for all we know. Yep, and you can plan your day around it too. Like, oh, two hours right here instead of four hours or something like that, you know? I think it is starting to get to that point, and it kills the flow of the game, and it sucks, right? Because college football crowds are rowdy. You know how they are. A lot of, uh, I guess, tribalism uh, in college college football. And it's fun, but it kind of kills the flow of the game, and I hate it. So, no. uh, and, and soccer I'm a change man. is is brilliant because it has that. Plus, MLS can capitalize on this. Where are you, MLS? Advertise this. It's a two hour window. You're in, you're out. You have your afternoon to yourself if you're watching some premiership in the morning. Or you could watch some MLS in the evening and you have your entire Saturday to plan around knowing, hey, from seven to nine, I'm going to watch the Los Angeles Galaxy play Team Y. It's a good it's a good spot and MLS the more and more I think about the more and more MLS should promote it but let's get into it Armand the US men's national team have a couple friendlies here in the beginning of September and Greg Berhalter made some interesting decisions with the call-ups so with this roster which is a 26 man roster we see four goalkeepers go up Jesse Gonzalez Brad Guzan Sean Johnson Zach Steffen Defenders, we see John Brooks, Reggie Cannon, Sergino Dest, Nick Lima, Aaron Long, Daniel Lovitz, Walker Zimmerman, Tim Ream, and Miles Robinson. In the midfield, we see Sebastian Legette, Weston McKinney, Alfredo Morales, Paxton Pomacall making his debut, Christian Roldan, Will Trapp, and Jackson Yule. And the forwards, we see Corey Baird, Tyler Boyd, Jordan Morris, Christian Pulisic, this is a forward. Josh Sargent, and Giossi Zardes. Now, Steven, I want to read a little bit of some fun facts off for you. Yeah, give them that. Uh, the roster features 15 players in the USA's runner-up squad at the 2019 CONCACAF Gold Cup where he lost 1-0 to Mexico in the final. Zach Steffen has four clean sheets and nine appearances for the U.S. Men's National Team in 2019. Pulisic is tied with Jake's favorite player, Giossi Zardes, for a team lead in goals <laughs> for a piece in 2019. Two players from the 2019 FIFA U20 World Cup are actually getting their first sniff at senior team level action. Berhalter calling in Sergino Dest of Ajax and Paxson Pomico of FC Dallas. 
There's some youth being involved in this group as well. Eight players are age eligible for the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo with Cannon, Dest, McKenney, Pomacall, Pulisic, Robinson, Sargent, and Yule all eligible. And our final fun fact for our man Jake Watroba, who again we miss. Jossi Zares tops the MLS goal scoring chart among U.S. based players with 11 goals. Wow. Wow. Isn't that saying something, by the way, that the American in the American League only has 11 goals, and then you have Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Carlos Vela, Jose Martinez doubling that? Yeah, it does say a lot, to be honest with you. Sadly, <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, hey, the U.S. is 8-3-1 and one in the 12 matches since January. This is the 70th edition of USA-Mexico, which will be this upcoming Friday at MedLife Stadium. It's going to be a road game for the U.S., so it's going to be a hostile environment. Then four days later, road trip to St. Louis, where the number five team in the world, Uruguay, takes on the U.S. Armand, quick reaction to the roster. What What is Greg Berhalter getting at here? To me, he, he's adding a, a little bit of youth, a little bit of some other guys. You know, he's not trying to win a tournament. He's just trying to evaluate talent. And looking at the roster, you do see players that you're intrigued by. Miles Robinson's had a fantastic year for Atlanta United. We like that. Um, you look through Sergio Dest, obviously getting those Champions League minutes. Those are crucial. He gets a look, and I think that's really, really nice to see. Paxton Pomacall rewarded for a strong MLS season. It's, it's, it's a hybrid, you know. It's not too youth. And it's not too many vets. The hybrid between, you know, who he thinks, I guess, are the best players or players he just wants to take a look at, right? Uh, players that haven't been called up or players that have been, he just analyze where they're at. So the best way to evaluate talent is to bring them into a training camp and see them in friendlies. I think that's what we see with this roster right here. Yeah, I mean, total agreements. And honestly, the reason why we're actually talking about the roster is isn't necessarily who he called up. It's the fact that Greg Berhalter made some interesting comments on MLSsoccer.com's Extra Time Radio where he was interviewed. And I actually want to break down some of the audio because I think there is a genuine candidness from Greg Berhalter. And it's very revealing on what he's saying and what he's wanting to do with the U.S. national team. And we got several cuts here. So we're going to begin with cut A. What I found really interesting with Greg Berhalter is that when he calls up players, he tries to capture them when their momentum is at the height. Not necessarily when they're going through a difficult part of their season. And here's what he had to say. How do you know when a player who has stood out for his club or a youth national team is ready for the senior national team? I don't know. I mean, there's no exact science to it, right? What you do is you try to gauge. I mean, we're watching all the games. We're looking at the speed at which these guys are playing. We're looking at the pressure that's exerted on them in games. You know, um, is it a very tight game? In the big games, are they able to make an impact? You know, we know the, the international level is a, is a high level. So what we're looking at is specifically when these guys play in difficult games, how they're doing. Um, you know, for example, I was at LAFC watching Miles Robinson against LAFC and, and seeing how he's going to cope with a game like that. Um, so we're just getting, you know, we're getting hints. We're getting, we're trying to make the best possible decision. I think what other people do, and, and you know, you get excited, right? So a guy plays two good games, and we're saying, oh, he should be a senior national team player now. I think, you know, and and even myself, I, I want to rush the development. But what I'd say is that there is. There is a timing. We try to we try to capitalize on momentum of a player. So as a player, for example, Sergino Dest, he played the under twenty World Cup. He went back to Ajax. He he had a good preseason. He was fighting for a position. He earned a position. He's playing. I mean, this is this is a great example of momentum. And now is a perfect time for him to to get an opportunity. Armand, you know what I love most about what you just said that he basically calls out every MLS USA soccer fanboy to tell them to shut the F up. Just because the guy had two great games for your club does not mean he needs a, a call up to the national team. I also like what he said about Miles Robinson as well, right? Mm -hmm. He said he said, Hey look, I went and watched it. I want to say how he copes with those matches. So I mean, as much as you know, there's been a little bit of talk of Greg wanting to value players going to Europe. I think he still sees a value, you know, as a former MLS coach of MLS 
and those top tier matches, right? LAFC Atlanta, LAFC one of the best teams in I mean, we could argue North America, we could potentially say. And you know, seeing how Miles Robinson copes against that, I think is a really interesting way to say it. And you want players that have momentum, right? Like you want consistent momentum. And but I don't think- you like don't you like that that they are looking when it comes to the national team and in particular when we're talking about World Cup qualifiers, these are just friendly, so it's not that important. But when the games mean something that he's not necessarily selecting who he thinks is the most talented. He takes into consideration what they're doing or, and whether or not they're getting playing time, whether or not they're they're excelling. What good is it to take in a player that's not playing regularly or is coming off an injury and he just started to get playing time back at his club? Where's right, the momentum there behind that? Right, there isn't. There isn't. And I think he mentions Dest. I think Dest is a perfect example of momentum. We, I mean, he, that's his example as well. Champions League minutes, you know, rose up, you know, played some U20. He's having an upward momentum and I think that's really interesting and to use an example I mean we could easily look at other players that might have the momentum as well um but like a Josh Sargent I, like a Josh Sargent exactly that goal he scored I mean that was obviously before the call but you see what you see what that does overall I mean I, I like candid Greg yeah and, no and, and, he's good and he gets even more candid when he's talking about Paxum Kalmakal's development I know that you were on a conference call with him uh, last week, and you obviously cover FC Dallas. So l- let's talk about Paxum and his call up to the national team. And here's Greg Berhalter again in the interview with MLSsoccer.com's Extra Time Radio on Paul McCall's development. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, a guy like Paxton, for example, is very interesting, right? Because he plays very well between the lines. He's good dribbling the ball. He can break lines dribbling. You know, he gives you a lot of solutions. Um, But, again, I think it's really early for a guy like him to be able to make an impact uh, at the senior level. Um, But it will be nice in his development. You know, if you think about this year for him, he's a guy that, that broke into the first team, has gotten solid minutes, has started out really well, has had a dip in form, physically has gotten tired, now he's rebounding a little, and now it's time to give him another stress to really round out this year of his development. And I'm excited to have him with the with the men's team and see how he can cope with the speed and, and, and with the level of the game. Now, Armand, when we're talking about momentum, Pomacol here is not necessarily on the same momentum run that some of the other players are going through right now. No way, not even close. He definitely has he's on the he's on a down track, you know, the physical toll of his first true MLS season has really gotten to him and he hasn't started the last two games for FC Dallas. He's come off early the previous two games against the Galaxy and the Montreal Impact. And he's taking it kind of in stride relative to what a lot of people uh, have been saying. But I think but the thing is with Paul McCall and uh, I think we'll get to this a little bit uh, later, something Greg mentioned on his conference call is that he wants to bring him in to see what ha- what he has, what he can bring, and again with the experience, kind of like Stephen when we talked about in I want to say 2017 when we talked about you know maybe Bruce Arena should have brought on Weston McKenney for a qualifier or something. Oh yes, you know to bring him on to get the, mm-hmm. to get that experience uh, before the big boy stages. So I think that's what he wants to do with Pomacon. You gotta say okay, it's a pretty good move uh, to to do so because Paxton's had a really good year. And you want to reward someone also for coming through the, the development of the national team from the youth group. He was a U18 at 16, went up to U20, played in the U20 World Cup, captain in the U20 World Cup. And how do you reward that? You reward that with a strong MLS season. You give him a, a chance to play. And I like this from Greg, but I, 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 will, I will argue. I feel like it's a weird bit of youth bias. Is that a thing? Like again, well, so yeah, Armand. I think you're touching here on the, in air quotes here, the controversial comments about Pax and Pomacol versus Ajax's Serginio Dest. There's probably going to be some of those guys that that may not play in the games, and you guys are going to be disappointed. And that's going to be, you know, how it goes. Um, you know, we'd like to to get them on the field. We, some of them will be, get on the field. Some of them will start in the games. And for us, it's again, it's about picking the right moment and, and setting a guy. I think it's setting a guy up for success. You know, when you think about a guy like Serginho Dest, um, you know, who's playing in these Champions League qualifiers, I mean, these are absolutely crucial fixtures for his club. 
If they lose this, it's a massive amount of money they're losing. And they have the faith to play this guy in, in the game. So, you know, my guess is that he's probably ready to play at the international level. And it, it's worth giving him an opportunity at the international level. Um, you know, Paxton is a, is a different story. You know, he subbed on for Dallas last game. You know, it's, it, we're talking about a completely different level that this player is at right now. But does he have interesting qualities? Has he shown enough during the year, you know, to bring him into the environment and see how he does? Absolutely. So it's, it's, there's not one right answer. And I'm the same way you guys are, except, um, you know, I want these guys to progress so quickly that I can use them. You know, I think of Gio Reyna. I wish he was, you know, ready to, you know, I wish it was four years later and, and he was at the top of his game. That's exciting to me. Paxton, um, Miles, you know, all these guys. But I also realize it's a process. I realize it takes time. And what we're doing is gathering as much information as, we're, as possible to, to, to find out if, if they're absolutely ready. I like that. Although I do, I'm again, Stephen. You know, I cover FC Dallas, and I'm, I I don't like the example of what Greg using the Houston match as okay, Paxton not starting. You know, whatever, uh, two different levels. But I I why I why Greg's well for the listeners it. why tell them why you don't like that example because some people don't follow FC Dallas and don't understand Houston's a bottom feeder team right now in MLS. They suck. Right, explain right, right. So, explain so, to the yeah. listeners. Why that statement by Greg Berhalter is puzzling in your eyes? Well, he didn't start that match because, plain and simply, part of it, a lot of it was due to fatigue. He has been very fatigued throughout the season or throughout this last couple of weeks due to the accumulation of minutes. And like, like I said, don't forget, it's Paxson's first MLS season. He played in the U20 World Cup. He's playing a role where... It has a lot of mileage. He's a box-to-box mid. He goes up and out of pitch like crazy. You're playing in the Texas heat. All these things add up. He's dealing with hamstring issues. Plain and simply, he has hamstring issues. So, Coach Lucy Gonzalez, let's be real here. He's not going to, like, I don't know the word for it. Like, if, if he doesn't need a star player, he won't. He, he doesn't have to. And if the team is strong enough, he won't have to. That's why you see Brandon Sylvania. And he also wants to try something different as well. So it's a mix, a kind of a hybrid, you know, of, okay, he's tired. And, okay, you know what? Let's try We can try something, too. It's – if it was MLS Cup or an MLS playoff game or, like, one of these games coming down a stretch, Paxton would start. Let me just say that. That's why I want the example. But I agree with what he's saying. I don't know if Paxton is necessarily ready uh, for the international stage just yet. That's why it's cool to get a checkup on him. So Gino Desto, I would, you could argue, is. Uh, we all know if Miles Robinson is really ready for international stage. That's why you bring him in. And I, I like and I like that, you know, Greg is being honest and saying, hey, look, some of these guys aren't ready. And you know, you guys do like 90 minute uh Twitter compilations of these guys and like their touches and stuff like that. In my eyes, they're not ready for the international level. So we want to bring them in, see what uh see what they can bring and see if they are ready for international level, because we're not sure if they are just yet, about yet. And I hate using Twitter to be like the the guide when it comes to evaluating players, but major sports pundits took that quote by Greg Berhalter and kind of put it out of context. It made it seem like reading the original quote about Pomacall and and Dest and their momentum and how the Dest was just playing for Ajax for Champions League and and money's on the line and how Pomacog didn't start against Houston. It just doesn't make sense, right? I mean, what Pause. Re, go back two minutes from this spot and listen to that quote by Greg Berhalter. He wants Pomacog to succeed. He wants Des to succeed. He wants all the kids to succeed. But he, he wants to be patient. He realizes that not every player is ready. But Armand... Greg Berhalter wants everyone to succeed. What? Why? Why was it made out to seem that Paxton, Pomacall, and, and Sardinio Des are on two completely different levels? I guess it might be because they're both U twenty World Cup guys. Um, that could be one. They're both similar in age. Uh, they're both two different stories, right? Des went is it to Ajax. Uh, Pomacall is a homegrown player in MLS. Uh, it's honestly two different routes for two different, you know, uh, young players. Uh, but I mean, overall, I mean, it do, it did kind of seem like that. Stephen did it not. I mean, 
I was pretty mad about the quote, to be honest with you. I, I didn't think it was fair um, to Pomaco. Uh, but, I mean, now getting the full context of everything, I think it's 100%. You know, Pomaco is someone that I personally do not think is ready for international just yet. Give it a year, give it two years, and, and I think we'll see it. Yeah, and I don't think what you were saying earlier with Miles Robinson, I don't think Greg Berhalter completely dis- dishes – on MLS, how I think he personally wants players to make their way to Europe. To me, that behind that quote is okay. Let, let's make sure we're managing Pax and Pomacol's development properly. And he goes on in the interview talking about he, how he's reached out to club officials and coaches and talking about how to utilize young players and how to maximize development not only at the club level but for the national team. Yeah, it's it's important to keep track of these things. But like I said earlier, the only way to get a real sense of what's going on is to bring them in, <laughs> bring them in, and yeah. you know, no, you're see not, what happens. You're not r- wrong there. And another call up, Joss Sargent, and he made headlines over the summer by not making the U twenty World Cup roster or the Concacaf Gold Cup, and he did comment on that decision. And I think Greg Berhalter made more of an executive decision to leave him off the roster for more than one reason. Here are his comments. You know, I, I think uh, there there were two different I – th- I talked to – who was it yesterday? I was talking on the phone to someone they are talking about. might have been Dunseth or, or someone else, but we are talking about how, you know, the Gold Cup was a clear objective. We wanted to win the Gold Cup. We took player – you know, we had to construct the roster. We had to have 23 players – and your aim is to win the Gold Cup. I think now is is a little bit different when you're moving into these friendlies and you have a little bit of, of latitude. You know, we're ca- calling 26 players into camp. And Josh in particular is a guy that I loved his response from, you know, from something that not going his way. He went back to Bremen and, you know, he just grinded and he worked hard and he got himself into the starting lineup in preseason. He performed well in preseason. Um, and, you know, now it, it's he hasn't played much, but – it's still a great mindset from a player after after a negative event, and um, you know he's a guy that we we've always talked about him having a bright future. It's not like we said we don't rate this guy. You know we really do. We think he's a, a really good player, and it will be nice to get him involved again. Armand, question for you: Josh Sargent, were the, was he on on the level of say a Jossi Zardes or a Josie Altador for the Gold Cup? It's a toss up between the three, right? Mm-hmm. That answer doesn't necessarily tell me anything because if Jossie Zardes, Josie Altador, and Joss Sargent are a toss up when it comes to the forward position during the Gold Cup, and he says that he was explicitly wanting to win it, then why didn't he just get drop one of the other two and bring up the youngster, knowing that, you know what, this guy has potentially 15 years to 20 years ahead of him with the national team. Meanwhile, a Jossie Zardes or a Josie Altador, that time is way more restricted. Are you insinuating that it wasn't as much a toss-up as people think? Well, what I'm insinuating is that it is a toss-up, but I think Greg Berhalter said, you know what, it is a toss-up. I don't have anything to lose with going with a Zardes or an Altador. Sargent is young. I'm not going to have him on this roster to send a message to the young kids saying your time here, just because you have a buzz, a transfer buzz, a Twitter buzz, make a highlight goal in Germany does not guarantee you a spot on this roster. When the time comes, you still have to earn it, whether that's in MLS or in Europe. That is my tin foil Ted theory here. And I think, if it if Greg Berhalter had any any thoughts like that, you know what? Good for Greg because that is smart. Because the last thing you want, and I've spoken to an MLS coach who has told me, who has played for the national team, that a lot of these kids, a lot of things are given to them, and they don't necessarily earn it, and it it doesn't mean as much when they put on the red, white, and blue. What well, thing? That combined with even the pump, what he said about Puma calls the message to like these guys, right? We want you riding on highs. We want you riding, you know, momentum. So you have to play good. I don't care what league you're playing. You got to play good. And 
will look at you. Maybe other leagues get the benefit of the doubt more than uh, other leagues. But I think it's one of those things where it's like, hey, look, I don't care if you get, you yeah, said 10K likes on Twitter. I want to see what you can do for me now. And I like the decision to bring in Sargent now. Although, I don't know if that really helps the decision of the U20 World Cup. I'm a bit miffed. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's that. a different story, right? Why right. he wasn't called up to that. Was there miscommunication within the Federation on, okay, does he get called up to the U20 or does he get brought into the Gold Cup? Right. And the thing is, I think with Greg, he's a smart guy. Like I said, sometimes he tries to be the smartest guy in the room and he thinks he is the smartest guy in the room. We could be overlooking into his comments, but I think he does have subliminal messages out there. He he wants to make he, he wants to make these you know these things heard, and he I think he really wants to say hey look what are you doing for me now like you said what are you doing for me now why do you deserve this why do you do this why do you do that like all all these things they're all important, and I think especially with what the U.S. fan base clamors for what youth. Transfer after rumors, transfer rumors, all that stuff. After spicy, disappointing... spicy skills, big money attached to the name, the next great thing. Right, right. After Twitter a likes. devastating, after a devastating, you know, not making the World Cup. I think Greg is trying to change the mentality of everyone. Say, hey, look, we're trying to compete for a World Cup. It's not what the future. It's about now, right? We got, com- we got to compete for now at some point, and we'll, we'll see. You know, I guess before the. World Cup qualifiers come out, you know, a and uh, maybe some more players getting some more looks. This is a very, very interesting interview. Listeners, MLSsoccers.com's Extra Time Radio. Check it out. Uh, he talks about the culture of the group, player, whether or not he's a player's coach, what, what he does to be a player's coach, uh, the all-important what-the-heck is Christian Pulisic's role, touches on that. Uh, listeners, question of the day, though. What are you expecting in these two matches against Mexico and Uruguay? Armand, frankly, I really am not expecting that much because it's a friendly and it's cool. You get to play your rival for the 70th time. You're playing Uruguay, which is a just a very talented team. So it's a good test, a good test for Greg Berhalter to see where he is with this process that he often talks about. Listeners, chime in at Unxam Soccer Pod. Armand, what are your expectations for the U.S. men's national team? I expect a lot of experimentation, but I expect Greg wanting to figure out who his group is still at the same time. Like, I don't expect Paul McCall to start either of the games, right? Uh, from his comments, from all that, uh, what he said in his conference call, seems like he wants to bring him just for experience. Maybe we get some substitute appearances, something along those lines. I think Greg's trying to find a sweet spot in players that he can trust. You can see a little bit of experimentation. Pulisic, this is the forward. Get a sergeant cup. I mean, he did talk about Sergino Dest uh, on that left on that left hand side, potentially pairing with Weston McKenney. Um, I, I think we'll see Sergino Dest probably get a start at left back, and we'll see a little bit of changes, but nothing significant really. I don't think anything's gonna be shocking. I don't think we should read too much into what's going on. Uh, like we said, World Cup qualifying is coming up soon, but not that soon. I think this is the you know a little quick tip for Nations League. I think Nations League then I think we'll start seeing a little bit more of a clear look of what Greg wants to do. But I mean overall, I'm just kind of there to have fun and just watch some of the games. Yeah, you know? and I think this is the hard part when it comes to talking about the U.S. men's national team during these friendlies is cool development experimentation but at the end of the day it's about world cup qualifying and getting to the next world cup and making it further than the round of 16 and it's difficult because you can't take too much stock into performance against mexico right or performance against uruguay uh, on a base on a baseball field but still <laughs> yeah but still listeners at on sam soccer pod come back tomorrow we got a ton of mls talk about again Sunday Night Football. Armand was watching the wrong type of Sunday Night Football at Armand Kafai. Get your coverage of FC Dallas. 
completely unbiased take here. Armand's covers of FC Dallas is top notch. Seriously, at Armand Kafai, at Jake Wetrova for Mr. Negative, at Stephen Jodder, and listeners, until next time.